This is Dan, and this is the Napkin Academy. And this is our first real lesson, the tools we need. And some of those tools are going to be fairly obvious. Uh, we're going to need some kind of electronic device, uh, whether that's your computer or whether that's your mobile device. And obviously that thing's going to have to be connected to the internet so we can stream these nice video clips. So we're going to need those things, but there are three additional types of tools that we're going to need. We're going to have to bring along some built-in tools, some analog tools, and possibly some more digital tools. So let's look at those for a moment. From a built-in perspective, pretty straightforward. There are three things that we need to bring in order to be good uh, visual problem solvers as we follow along. The first thing, of course, is we need to just bring our eyes. We need to have eyes that we're willing to use. and We need to bring our lovely eyes along. The second thing we need to do is we need to bring along our mind's eye, the part of our mind that allows us to think about things and think about shapes, even perhaps when our eyes are closed. And the third thing we're going to need to do is be able to bring along a little bit of hand-eye coordination because, yes, what I'm going to ask you to do more often than not is put a pen in that hand and draw on that piece of paper. Which brings us to our second set of tools, the analog tools. Now, hopefully, you've already got one of these, piece of paper and some kind of pen, something that you can draw on that piece of paper with. Yes, if you want to use a pencil because you want to do some erasing, that's fine too, but we do need a sheet of paper. In fact, go ahead and grab a few sheets of paper. Now, that's option one. Option two, which is also kind of a favorite of mine, is you can actually go out and you can buy what they call a student lap board whiteboard. Student lap board. Let's write that one down. A student lap board. And all it is, is it's a, uh, uh, a little erasable board, a little whiteboard that's no bigger than a sheet of paper. And what I like about those is, of course, you're going to need an eraser to come along with it. And it's going to come with some kind of erasable pen. And you only really need one color. If you want to get black and if you want to get a second color, a really nice color that's good to get as well is get red. In fact, that's true if you're going to be using pens over here. You know what? I'm going to add on something. Not only a black pen, but let's go ahead and get a red pen too. I think it's really good to have two colors of pens. Back to our student lab board for a moment. The reason that I like these is because they are erasable. So what's beautiful about them especially for people who are less certain about their drawing skill is you know we can go ahead and draw something and we can be doing a really good job and then we can draw something else and say whoops I messed it up that's not what I want and with our eraser of course we can come right in there and we can erase it and you know what nobody ever has to see what we did you know, we can just erase that thing and then go ahead and start over again. That's why I really like the lap board too. So those are our uh, those are our analog tools, and then of course, you know, there are our digital tools. And yes, I think it's important to say that right now I am I'm sitting over here, and let me give you a little sense of what's going on with me. I've got on a headset, which I'm talking through, and I am actually sitting in front of a tablet PC. And what I like about the tablet PC, this is this used to be what we'd call a laptop PC that has the ability to draw on the screen. And then, of course, what I do is I roll it over and I fold it over so that the drawing screen is right on top. And then what I'm doing is I'm actually drawing right on this screen right now. And I've got some interesting little software that's helping to record it. But basically, from a digital perspective, that takes us to our option number one. I actually would prefer... For most people, most of the time that we go back to our analog model, a paper and a pen, but if you're really, really bent on doing this digitally, if, for example, you want to broadcast or make a clip like I'm doing, then there are two things that we can do these days. The first one, that are, there are real options. The first one is go ahead and go out and buy yourself a tablet PC. And the, the thing that you need to be aware of is for the tablet PC to be useful, it can be a laptop, it can come from any one of the brands, but it, you must be able to draw on the screen, which is exactly what I'm doing. So option number two, of course, is these days, uh, you know, the obvious answer is to go out and get yourself an iPad. Uh, iPad's really nice because uh, you can draw on it so easily. 
all kinds of software available. Uh, the software that I'm running on my tablet we'll talk about towards the end of the entire back of the napkin uh, lesson series. There's lots of software that you can have on your iPad too that'll help you draw. And of course that also goes for, for any one of your uh, smartphones. You know, smartphones also have the ability to draw on them. The tricky part here, of course, is with an iPad. The way it was designed is you're supposed to draw on it with your finger. And I'm going to tell you right now, drawing with your finger is not a good way to go. So if you're going to use an iPad or if you're going to use a smartphone to try to follow along on these lessons, which you can absolutely do, I really strongly recommend that you do go out and get yourself a stylus of some kind and you know it's going to be infinitely easier for you to draw on screen but I think the critical point is whether you want to go with the tablet or whether you want to go with the iPad there is okay there's an option 1.5 in the middle it's just uh, not as great let's say you get a, a PC and it doesn't have to be a tablet it could be a desktop too what you can do is you can also get a little drawing tablet that you can hook up I'm not a huge fan of these I'll show you why because the fact is if you're drawing over here and you're watching it appear on the screen it can be great but it can also be kind of uh, it can be a little bit frustrating because what you're drawing over here isn't exactly what you're seeing over here so the beauty of it is if you got your tablet PC what you draw is what you get if you've got your uh, iPad or smartphone smart device what you draw with your finger or with your stylus is what you get these are the ways that we want to go if you really want to go digital so those are the tools. That's all we're really going to need. Um, I think uh, that's pretty much covers everything. With that, we're ready to go ahead and start doing some serious lessons.